You're listening to This Is My Side Hustle, the tips, tools, and advice you need to optimize your life live here. If you're looking to unlock the secrets to additional income by engineering your choices around your ideal lifestyle, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join us as we unpack unconventional ideas and methods to give you more freedom and flexibility. Let's escape the rat race together and live with intention. Let's learn how others are making it pay with their side hustles. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of This Is My Side Hustle. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between being a work-at-home employee and owning your own business or being a business owner who works solely online from wherever you want. Now, the reason I am talking about this today is because I was actually faced with a dilemma this week. Um, I came across a job opening for a remote position for a large multi-million dollar company in New York City. And they were looking for a staff writer for online businesses. And basically the description was exactly what I do. And I actually think I was overqualified for it because not only could I write about online businesses and rate and review some of the top software and services that online businesses use, I also could have helped to fulfill some of their other job openings. And so I went ahead and applied. This was last week, actually, I applied and I haven't sent a resume to anyone. And I don't even know how long because I've been a business owner. And when you get clients, you pitch them on your services and show them how you can make their businesses better um, and how you can serve them. But you don't usually send a resume. You usually send them your capabilities, uh, what you could do for them, your suggestions, maybe some testimonials. So I actually had to polish up my very, very old resume that was probably at least 10 years old and update it. And I added a capabilities deck and portfolio to it. So my what I sent them actually was a cover page and then about five pages because <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend this, but I wanted them to see that this is literally exactly what I do all day long and I could totally rock this position for them. And the position included full benefits, 401k matching, health insurance, and all of that. And the only thing that kind of bothered me was that it was a full-time position, but you don't work nights or weekends. You work whenever you want during the day from wherever you want. So I wouldn't have to go to New York City, but I'm pretty sure they had staff meetings and fun events and things like that every once in a while if I would want to go. But (laughs) I was all gung-ho about applying for this job, and I was supposed to have an interview, a phone interview, because they called me back and they said, wow, you you seem like you'd be a perfect fit for this, and um, I was going to talk to them over the phone today, and this has literally been the busiest week of the last two years, I believe, of my life. (laughs) So sometimes I think God has a sense of humor when um, I think maybe I should do something else or add something else to my plate. And it actually became pretty clear to me this morning that this was not something that was going to make my life better. In fact, I would probably regret it and end up doing them a disservice by not staying there very long. And I want to just go over some of the the things I worked through in my own mind to come to this conclusion. Uh, yes, I did contact them this morning, and I was very honest and open with them. And I told them my reasonings, and I said, thank you so much. I, I hope you find a great candidate. It's just not me at this time. And um, 
I kind of was a little bit embarrassed about that because I thought here I went through all of this time and hassle of revamping my resume and creating a portfolio. But guess what? You never know when you're going to need that. And I now have a fantastic portfolio ready and anything else. If perhaps a better, less time involved position would come up that I would maybe take on in addition to my virtual assistant business. But honestly, with launching the podcast this week, so the, the week I'm recording this, that you're hearing this, this is the week I launched my podcast. It's the week of April 15th. So let me just give you a rundown of what's been going on in my life this week and what led me to the decisions to not actually take this job on top of everything else I'm doing. So I launched my podcast at the beginning of this week, and it's going to be my seventh stream of revenue. Um, And the way I will get revenue from a podcast is through affiliate links that I mentioned in the show and in the show notes, possible partnerships, and also sponsorships in the future as I get more listeners. So this is a beginning, not quite yet profitable, but hope to be profitable stream of income that I can do from wherever I want. In fact, I am broadcasting today from my backyard in southwestern PA, and it is 75 degrees, and it's so beautiful. So if the sound quality isn't great, I guess I will apologize again for that, but I could not resist getting out in the sunshine, sitting on the ground, doing a little grounding, and uh, going for it. So I told you a little bit about this position and all of the great benefits, and I also looked into the salary for this company. And it basically was about what I'm bringing in now through all of my other streams of income. However, at the moment, I'm still working about 20 hours or less per week. Now with the podcast, it's more like 20 hours instead of 15. Uh, But I'm working part time. And I'm very, very grateful for that. I value my time and margin in my life and control over how I spend my time pretty much more than anything else at this point. Um, With two preteen girls at the moment who require a lot of my, not so much my attention or my help, but a lot of my time driving them places um, from school activities to gymnastics. They both are in competitive gymnastics and they both practice 12 hours per week and they have different schedules for when they need to be there. So I drive to and from gymnastics to take them and pick them up four times a week and at least 12 weekends a year, we are gone pretty much all weekend, at least two hours away, usually more like two and a half to three hours away getting a hotel room, and I'm spending my weekends watching them compete. Now, I would not trade this because it means a lot to them. The value they get out of participating in gymnastics, I can't put a price on. They've made the best friends. Their work ethic is fantastic. They learn discipline. They learn to deal with failure and bad results and work at getting better. Our coaches are fantastic. The parents of all of the other girls on the team are fantastic. And it's just a season in life. But I'm very busy just with that, let alone running a household, going grocery shopping, cleaning my house, cooking, and holidays, and anything else that might come up that's just normal part of life you know, invitations to different places. Uh, I had to turn down an invitation tonight to hang out with some of the gymnastics moms because my husband also sometimes works crazy hours and holidays coming up or coming up on Easter. And he's working some different hours than usual. And I need to be there to take them and pick them up from gymnastics and a school event. And uh, it's just been a little crazy. In addition to that, one of my clients has a broken wrist, and um, 
I offered to t- pick up the slack on anything she needed because she can't type well right now. So I've been doing a little more for her this week and probably will continue for the next two months or so while she is in a cast. I have another client who is launching a brand new website next week and a brand new physical store and they need social media promotions and Facebook ads and blog posts and countdown timers and email marketing and pretty much everything you can imagine for a big launch. And they just happen to be launching this month as well. And another client is launching an online course as well. And so I did a little additional things this week for that client. I went into Kajabi and created all the images for every week and every day for a six week course and published them all and linked everything so that she would be ready to go. And I have another client who is an accountant and well, this is tax week and some of her clients were late. So we had to respond to them and tell them, Hey, you need to get this. You need to get your taxes sent in. You didn't file for an extension. And so we're dealing with tax season on top of that. Of course, I'm dealing with, uh, setting aside all of my quarterly taxes this year, which are going to be a little different than they were last year. I'm deciding whether I want to change to an S corp or just continue as an LLC. I'm not quite sure. Um, so I've been researching that. I have another client who's speaking at a big event next week and I've been researching some things for her to do in the area and costs for her to Uber versus getting a rental car and, It's been uh, a little bit crazy. In addition to all of the gymnastics things, uh, I have one daughter with braces, so I've had to go to orthodontist appointments or reschedule them. She also is a chiropractor for um, her back because her back's been bothering her. She's at an age now where gymnasts, when they have a growth spurt, usually around anywhere from age 11 to 14 and she's kind of right smack dab in the middle of that. Uh, they have a lot more tendon issues, bone issues, and things like that. Um, I've been taking her to a chiropractor. She should be fine. She doesn't have any serious things going on, but she's been having a lot of growing pains, a lot of back pains. So I've been taking her to that, and that's about a 45-minute drive. Um, it's not that far away, but we always – end up going right during rush hour because it's the only time I can fit it in. So it ends up being a two hour process every time I take her. (laughs) And she wants to try out for cheerleading in the fall for our school. And they require specific forms and physical things. And my other daughter is going away to a special school camp in the fall that all the fifth graders go to. So I had to fill out that information and It's just literally been uh, the craziest week ever. (laughs) And let's just get back on topic here now that you know every little detail about my crazy life this week. And I've just dumped that all on you. I'm sorry, but just wanted to let you know what's going on. Um, That's kind of why I decided not to take on an additional 40 hours a week because I'm already feeling at my max at 15 to 20 hours a week. And you might be listening to this and think, ha ha, I work 50 hours a week and you're ridiculous and suck it up and hire people to clean your house and you can do this and hustle, hustle, hustle. And this podcast is called This Is My Side Hustle. But guess what? That does not make me happy. I thrive off of downtime, solitude, alone time, And time to learn and grow as a person and read and expand my skill set and brainstorm. I literally need those things to be happy. So I really don't think I would be a good employee anymore. When I started to think about the fact that someone else would basically be in control of 40 hours of my week, it made me sick to the stomach. And I had to ask myself, is this going to 
improve my quality of life? And the answer was definitely no. And I thought, am I going to grow as a person if I take on this employee position in addition to running everything else I'm doing? And the answer was no. And I looked at my schedule and I thought, even if I could fit this in, what else would have to give? Because there's an opportunity cost. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And if I said yes to this, I'd be saying no to something else in my life. And I don't want to say no to what I have going on right now. I don't want to scale back the podcast that I just launched. I'm excited about it. I want to keep it going. I have a vision for the future. I have a long-term plan. I want to keep this going. I certainly don't want to disappoint my clients or cut one of them out. I love all of my clients right now, and I absolutely love what I'm doing for them. I work with them really well. We're all on a great schedule. They know when I work best. I know when they work best. Uh, We have great communication. The last thing I would want to happen is to all of a sudden start dropping pieces for them. So I knew I couldn't cut it from there. And then I looked at my family life. And do I want to cut out spending time with my kids who are only with me for eight to 10 more years tops? And already they're slipping away. They don't really think I'm cool anymore. They don't necessarily want to spend time with me. They just need stuff from me. Um, No, I didn't want to cut it. Did I want to cut out time with my husband when he works crazy hours now too? And he works every third Saturday and he's busy. And no, I didn't want to cut that out. Did I want to cut out time that I spend reading or learning or making myself a better person? No way. That stuff really has an impact on my life. And without those things, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I looked at all of those different things. And the only thing that was still tempting me to take this on was the money and the 401k matching. But then I thought, would I really double my income to be miserable and lose out on things that are really important to me? And my answer was no. And I thought about how good I feel now that I'm in control of my schedule. I work when I want. If I want to take on an additional client for a little bit more or a couple more hours per month, I can, but I don't need the money. We've been saving a lot of my income. We have a ton of margin built into our budget, a ton. And we're able to put additional thousands of dollars onto our mortgage, and that should be paid off soon. And we're able to save like crazy. And I like that, and that makes me feel good. But even if I had all of that additional income, it wouldn't make me any happier. I feel like I've hit my happiness peak right now and spending more time on someone else's watch and somebody else's agenda is definitely not going to make me happier. Now, this might not be the case for you. You really have to look at your personality when it comes to things like this. And I love self-development. I love personality tests. I love the Myers-Briggs test the DISC test, the Enneagram, or yeah, Enneagram, that's how you pronounce it. And I'm very rare, so you might not want to maybe buy into what I have to say or my opinions on this. I happen to be a very rare personality type, especially for a female. So for a Myers-Briggs personality test, I come in as an INTJ Sometimes I'm more of an ISTJ, uh, but I'm I'm very I'm very careful with my time. But when I do spend my time and energy, it's on learning new things and figuring out the best ways to do things. Usually using systems and figuring out how to make things be most efficient possible or the most efficient they can be. And sometimes when I'm more relying on 
not reinventing the wheel and using systems that work. I'm more of an ISTJ, but sometimes I figure out my own way. And then I think those systems and traditions are really stupid and I chuck them and I'm more of an INTJ. I kind of vacillate between the two, but the IST, that's me. (laughs) Or the ISJ, I guess I should say, is me. Sometimes I, I switch back and forth between the N and the S. But that's just how I am, and it's pretty rare for females to be like that. So I definitely have a hard time sometimes relating to other women. So if you're a woman and you're listening to this, you really might think I'm crazy and not get what I'm saying here, and I'm sorry. I'm just telling you my own perspective and why I make decisions the way I do. Um, I also highly base everything on logic. I do have feelings, but I don't do well with them. I don't do well processing my feelings. I don't do well processing other people's feelings. And I've had a lot of feelings the last few weeks that I've just kind of pushed away because I don't have time for them and I don't want to deal with them and I don't want to process through them and I don't even want to acknowledge them. And what happens is they all go into my neck and my upper back and I get these huge knots that not even my husband can get out. (laughs) And I just live with knots in the top of my back. That's where I store my feelings, I think. In fact, today um, I had about two hours in the afternoon to spare and I was debating on whether I should go walk my dog or if I should call a massage place and book an appointment that had an opening. And I ended up booking an appointment that had an opening. My client, one of my clients had given me a massage gift certificate for my birthday, which was two months ago. And I hadn't gotten to it yet. They were able to get me in and I went and I literally could feel my feelings and emotions oozing out the top of my head during the entire massage. And I don't know how to explain that, but I felt this release of, I don't even know what, and it wasn't even so much a physical good feeling. I mean, obviously it was, I love massages and I love when other people massage me, but I don't want to touch other people. I would be a horrible massage therapist, but (laughs) I don't mind who is rubbing me. I'm totally all about that, but I could feel my, all of my thoughts and all of my feelings just kind of melting away and going out of the top of my head and the top of my head was hot. Like it was very bizarre. So I'm pretty sure that that helped me. Um, I do notice also when I'm physically active and when I'm out in nature taking walks, I, f- I feel a lot better with my thoughts because like I said, I don't feel emotions as much as I think through things, but I, it's not like I don't have emotions, but I don't know, maybe that'll help you decide. Um, So that's one reason, just with that little bit of background, maybe you can understand why I just feel better being my own boss rather than working for someone else. I don't like to deal with other people's drama and emotions, and I usually end up just telling them why they shouldn't feel that way, and most people don't want to hear that, and I always want to find a solution to everyone's problem too and fix it for them and tell them, you know, well, if you just do this, you won't feel like that anymore. And most people, like 98% of the population, that's not helpful for. So although I'm not a jerk um, and I get along with people quite well and I'm not, I'm not socially inept or anything, I just don't want to take on other people's feelings and emotions about things, especially when I'm working, because I like to compartmentalize things into systems and into facts and into logic, figure out the best way to do it and be done with it. I don't like feelings getting involved. Um, As far as the DISC test, I can't remember the results for that. I was really high on one. It basically ties into the whole Myers-Briggs things. But on the Enneagram, I am a five through and through. (laughs) I am uh, the investigator. Um, Again, don't process information well. And I I live out my life in fear of people taking things from me. And one of the biggest things that I fear that people are going to take from me is my time and my privacy. Um, This was really hard for me as far as my time and my privacy. Last year when I launched the Making It Pay Lifestyle course, I felt like I had to show up for people and be there um, indefinitely 
And there's nothing wrong with that, but I hoard my private time when no one can get in and I, I'm greedy with it. <laughs> and you might think it's funny that I'm doing a podcast. I don't feel as bad with a podcast because I don't mind talking about it. I don't mind admitting it whatsoever, but I'm not going to be sitting here being available for you to constantly maybe give me feedback or pick my brain. And there's nothing wrong with that, but my brain power and my energy to give to other people feels more limited than most other people. And I'm constantly hoarding it. I'm a total minimalist when it comes to living. I'm constantly getting rid of things. I don't like stuff. I'm not greedy about stuff. I don't like things or clutter. What I like is massive amounts of margin and time that I can do what I want. So I am greedy and selfish in that way. Um, and I have a really hard time giving my time away to other people. But when I do, I'm there. Unless one of my kids are sick or something comes up that I literally can't be there, I'm committed. If I say yes to something, yes, I will be there. Or yes, I will show up for this. I will unless someone's pushing boundaries or unless I just don't have you know, the capability because of an unforeseen circumstance or something like that. So I do consider my obligations very carefully, but I'm very stingy with them, if that makes any sense. So I think that's another reason why I just would not be a good employee. I like to be able to determine my time, my projects. Um, it does sound really selfish and it probably is, but I'm just being honest with you here. I'm I'm showing my weaknesses. That's the way I am. I like to fix things for people. And if I can't, or if I get caught up in teamwork and drama and all of that, and I'm doing small talk with people or making people feel good for no reason, it's difficult for me. So that was another reason why I just said no to them. Uh, thankfully, whoops, sorry about that. My girl's about to get off the bus. So I got to wrap this up, but thankfully um, he was super um, understanding about it. I still am probably going to be working on good Friday. Um, just wrapping up a few quick little things, but that's my decision. My clients are awesome. They're all taking off. <laughs> I'm just doing a couple little tweaks on my own thing. So you're going to hear this after Easter. Anyway, I just wanted to say, I hope you have a great Easter and hopefully some of these, some of these insights will help you realize, would you be better off working for yourself or would you rather have the direction of a boss or the structure of an employee job? Do you like working with other people? Do you like being told what to do and when? If so, then you'd probably be a great employee and you should look for work at home employee positions. But if not, if you can relate to what I'm saying, you'd probably make a great entrepreneur and online business owner. So until next time, this is my side hustle. Thanks so much for listening and don't forget to rate us, review us, and go to the show notes and leave us a comment on things you might want to hear about in the future or your thoughts on this particular episode. If you want to be on the show, then go to makingapaytostay.com slash application. Or if you just want to leave us a question or comment via voicemail, then go to makingitpaytostay.com slash voicemail. And please subscribe and share this with your friends. Talk to you next time.